Oh, hi, it's Zach Peter, your new favorite pop culture guru, serving you the hottest tea three times a week. From the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, unfiltered convos with your favorite stars, and of course, the latest from Vanderpump Land, I've got you covered. And new episodes of the podcast are now available in video on Spotify. And they don't just let anybody do video, but this platinum blonde has won them over. So if you want the latest news from the ultimate tea spilling professional, tune in to No Filter with Zach Peter. That's No Filter with Zach Peter on your favorite podcast app now. Welcome to the Story Worthy Podcast. Here are your hosts, Christine Blackburn and Hannah Finn. Welcome to Story Worthy. I am Christine Blackburn and I'm here with Hannes Finney, and we are coming to you from Madame Trousseau's Hollywood Wax Museum, where we are surrounded by stars. Or are they real? I don't know. Perhaps they're made of you wax. You know what I like about the Madame Tussauds is that truly, I mean, the people that are in wax are like, you're, you know, they're like the correct size. So you really can get an idea of what they're like in person. I mean, you can. It's true. All right. So what you're getting at is that, that our topic tonight is I touched Madonna's arm. A very specific thing. Something you could do at Madame Tussauds. See, now, I'm interested in hearing how she touched the real Madonna's arm. Right. Obviously, probably millions of tourists have touched Madonna's fake arm right. in the wax museum here. But we think but that Suzanne Kroll has more of a story. We're, we're hoping. If it turns out that I've guessed her story and that she went to Madame Tussauds and <laughs> grabbed the forearm of wax figure, this is going to be the worst, worst story ever. ever. Yeah. That's right. No, uh, Suzanne Kroll, folks, she's an actress is what she is. You've seen her all over the place. And uh, she is here tonight and she's going to be telling this this story. As you know, the guest brings the theme. I have really not right. a lot to well, say about Madonna's arm. So we've broadened it sort of to celebrity encounters. That's right. Celebrity encounters. Now, uh, I'm talking about like stars, Hannes, that you maybe have had an interaction with. Mm -hmm. Like I got to interview John Travolta. That was pretty big. That is pretty big. And yeah. he hugged me and he kissed me. Right. Right. Was it's a he... little kiss. Oh, okay. It wasn't like a tongue kiss. No, it wasn't. A... He's married. Uh huh. Anyway, that okay. Stopped Danny a lot DeVito. of guys in Hollywood I've from met tongue Danny kissing. Danny DeVito, also a great guy. Danny DeVito, did he he uh, kissed you? But he was so short, it was disturbing. No, oh but goodness. I had you know he was a great guy, and I've had a good interaction with him. Now I've had a lot of star sightings, which is sure. not a big deal in Hollywood. Well, I, I, I do want. May I just tell you my. My biggest celebrity encounter where it's an actual thing, okay. which is I was I was appearing in a uh, advert to uh, uh, bring viewers to the Alf talk show. Mm. Uh, as some people may remember if they're truly desperate for entertainment that a couple of years ago, Alf had his own talk show, Alf the Puppet. Uh, and Ed McMahon was the sidekick on the Alf talk show. Wow. That's and I worked else. with Ed McMahon and there was a weird thing that happened where. Uh, a crew member got hurt and uh, uh, while shooting this. So we had to, uh, there was a, like an hour and a half lull where they had to get the paramedics and get this guy out wow. of there. And there was nothing to do. And somehow it fell to me because I was the guy playing the stage manager with Ed McMahon. So Ed McMahon and I sat on a talk show set and talked for an hour and a half. That's awesome. It was Pretty gold darn awesome, let me no, tell you. No, that is awesome. Never, he was a good person, right? He was. He was a very nice person. He was exactly what you would think. Yeah. He was. He, he just. He talked like this. He's no Madonna. Well, I think that his arm and Madonna's arm were probably. I'm guessing they looked pretty similar. Were you ever a fan of Madonna, Hannes? Never, never. I See, am straight. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, no. I mean, I'm just saying. Like when I was in college, that's when she came out with like a virgin. It was the early '80s. Everybody was dressing like her, like one black leather glove, and then it was like such a thing. Madonna. She was so hot, and I just was no. I had no part of that. No. I. I. I mean, I. Yeah, admittedly, you know, I am not the target audience, but there's plenty of artists for whom I'm not the target audience that I can well appreciate. For right. instance, for instance, your Lady Gaga, who you wouldn't think I would like, but I do like Lady oh, Gaga. Oh, interesting. You know why I like Lady Gaga? Because the first time I ever heard her, she was on Saturday Night Live, but I wasn't in the room. And you just and liked I couldn't her voice. see her. Yeah. All I heard was her, and I heard a, a voice at a piano. I was like, that's a pretty good song. I walk in, and she's got, like, orbiting rings around her head. Right. And if I had seen that, I would have been like... 
what's your friggin' problem? But since I heard her first, I was like, she has actual talent. So you didn't judge her. I didn't judge a book I by its cover. I saw her in the paper today wearing a meat dress. Have you seen this? I am from Wisconsin, so that does turn me on in many, many ways. She has a dress made of flank states. Yes, yes, uh, she does. I believe she had worn that. Actually, I read about this. She wore that several months ago. Right, and then and they it, preserved it. They preserved, they preserved it with it. like a they... taxidermist preserved her meat dress. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. I find that, I'm sure the vegetarians in the world are horrified. I find that extremely amusing. Right, okay. Raised hand of our guest. <laughs> That's Zan a topic Kroll. for another day. That's right. All right, let me tell you one more um, star encounter that I had, and that was I was at a party at Chateau Marmont. I was in line for the bathroom. Uh, the line was very long. A gentleman that works at the facility, Chateau Vermont, came up to me. He said, perhaps you'd like to use that bathroom over there. So I went to the other room and I opened it up. And who was inside doing blow? Who? Uh, almost day went who? Sharon Stone. Oh, that's so pretty good. So I saw Sharon Stone doing uh, blowing cocaine. So that was cool. Or snorting is, cocaine, snorting I guess cocaine. She blew cocaine. She was <laughs> wasting a lot of money. It's so funny how that was like, that's so, it's almost like you're, it's a story that's like, oh, it's so old school. It's, you know, nobody t- does blow anymore. I, I like it that she- It struck me she, how tall she is because she had to lean so far over to the countertop. And that struck good. me like, oh, pretty girl, pretty girl while she does blow. Yeah, and that's true. That is probably hard to maintain your uh, uh, sexual allure exactly. while snorting cocaine. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Suzanne Kroll is our uh, storyteller tonight, and she's going to be here in just a minute. Uh, if you go to storyworthypodcast.com, you'll see her picture, Hannes. You will see her picture. And then she'll, you'll, picture. Say to her, you'll say to yourself, like, oh, my God, I know that girl. Yeah, I know be like, that girl. Exactly. Exactly. We'll see her. And I wonder, perhaps she's on the Facebook. We're on the Facebook, you know. Uh, we are on the Facebook. So look for us on the Facebook. We'll find out later whether she's on the Facebook. That's right. All right. Wherever you are, folks, uh, stay tuned because Suzanne Kroll is coming up. And somehow she touched Madonna's arm. back. Uh, we've actually moved down Hollywood Boulevard from Manager Sos. We are in the lobby of the Pantages Theater. The Pantages Glorious Restored Pantages Theater. Yes, yes. And I was just reminded during the break when we were all doing blow um, <laughs> that I had met Martin Scorsese, which <gasps> wow. impressed our guest very much. Mm-hmm. Now, I was a featured extra. Not an extra. I was a featured, I'm sorry, background artist oh, on boy. The Aviator. Oh. And, uh, uh, Martin Scorsese obviously directed The Aviator, and we, I was in a 20s uh, tux and tail in the uh, uh, lobby of the Pantages, and Martin Scorsese came through. He, he is he's a great guy, big giant head. He might be five feet tall. He's a tiny he man. He might be five feet tall. Was Leonardo DiCaprio in the scene? Actually, Leonardo DiCaprio was there, and I was playing... The I uh, was a, a crony of Louis B. Mayer, oh. who was played by an actor I didn't recognize, but of course, uh, Kate Hepburn was played by Kate Blanchett. Right. Who then what her basically her action was to walk directly to us. So Kate Blanchett walked up to me. That's another one. She's she walked one up to me like five very, times. Yeah, she's one of she my was, very favorite actresses. She's so, <laughs> yeah, stunning. So, just amazing. Just yeah, she is. Amazing. I like all the Kates. I like the Kate Winslet, the Kate Blanchett. I like the Kates. You do enjoy the Kates, don't you? Do, Interesting. Do you like the new, isn't, isn't the new queen going to be named Kate? The what? royal wedding? Oh, that's right. Well, yeah. The, the, she's a princess, though. She's not a queen. She will be queen. I have her no idea. husband is going to be. All right, that's the topic for You're talking for about royalty. Day. That's a whole royalty. Other, that's a whole well, we're other speaking, thing. We're going to bring up Madonna, and Madonna's as close to royalty as America has. <laughs> that's very true. The tonight's topic is I Touched Madonna's Arm by actress and uh, writer Suzanne Kroll. Now, Suzanne Kroll, Hannes, she hails from Brooklyn, New York. You familiar with that place? I've heard of it. Um, apparently, I don't know if it's real. It just appears to be the place that people in show business are always like. A lot of Well, artists. you know, I'm not. I'm. I may seem like some big shot now, but my feet are on the ground because I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah, it's true. There's so many artists from Brooklyn. That's very true. And anyway, Suzanne studied at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and she has over 50 TV credits to her name, Hannes. Let me just throw some of these names by you, okay? okay. NYPD Blue, yes. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Practice, Nip Tuck, Lost, Desperate Housewives, Psych, Charmed. 
She has starred uh, next to Jim Carrey and Madonna, as we talked about, and Leslie Nielsen, the late Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen, oh, there. That would have been something. Uh, Also, Suzanne has performed stand-up comedy as a regular at the Improv, and she's been featured at HBO's Aspen Comedy uh, Festival and also the Vail Comedy Festival. So right there, back to back. she's very good in high altitudes. That's what I'm thinking. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Anyway, she's married to uh, stand-up comedian Peter Sprite. You familiar with this guy? Yeah. I know him. He did a show here for Storyworthy called Door to Door. You familiar with that episode? He did. He did. Never mentioned he was married. Well, Actually, uh, he pretended <laughs> yes, he was he single did. and just hit on everyone in the room. Oh, you're so oh, funny. Oh, that's not right. You're so funny. Okay, before Suzanne comes in, Hannes, I do have to mention to you, uh, you know that you can hear Storyworthy on Stitcher Radio, right? Yeah, that's right, because Stitcher allows you to listen to your favorite shows directly from your iPhone or your Android. There's no downloading of the show necessary. Storyworthy streams on demand at Stitcher. That's right. And you can download it for free today at Stitcher.com or you just go over to the App Store. And when you register, you just put in Storyworthy. That's all one word, Storyworthy. And you'll be automatically entered to win a $100 cash card. Because we love Stitcher, because we love giving away money. That's right. All right, you guys, wherever you are, please start clapping now for Suzanne Kroll. It's the year 2000. I'm sitting in my truck parked outside Madonna's house. <laughs> oh my gosh. The Madonna. I look down at my hands. They're shaking. Before I drove here, I downed a glass of wine. Don't judge me. It was one glass. And besides, how many times in your life are you about to drive to the Madonna's house to have dinner with the Madonna? I've been cast as the Madonna's best friend in a feature film, the role I've been waiting for my entire life. My breakout role, the role I was meant to play. The pain, the suffering, the rejection, the poverty, the desperation is finally over. The Madonna has asked me to be her guest so that we may bond before the shoot begins. Life is great. I love my life. I have a wonderful life. I turn onto her street. She lives in Los Feliz, hip, retro, yet maintaining a certain air of exclusivity, a journey back to old Hollywood, a time when movies were called pictures and legs were called gams. I'm early, so I lay low and park across from the Madonna's house. I roll my seat back and slide down. I notice hidden cameras that aren't really hidden, nestled in perfectly pretentious bushes framing the Madonna's driveway. Oh, my God. The hidden cameras that aren't really hidden, nestled in the perfectly pretentious bushes framing the Madonna's driveway, probably see me parked across from the Madonna's house. (laughs) I'm an ass. I'm an invited guest. Why am I stalking the Madonna? I decide to be discreet and drive further up the street to park. I look at my face in the rearview mirror. Time to reapply powder. Time to wipe off the powder I've just reapplied. I check my watch. Crap, nine minutes left before I see the Madonna and my buzz is wearing off. I can't meet the Madonna without a buzz. I'm not pretty enough, I'm not fat enough, and I'm not gay enough. (laughs) Six minutes. Oh, I could tell her that I've dated girls. That might give me the edge I need. We could lie on her $600,000 Turkish rug and laugh about how fun it is to touch boobies. My cell phone buzzes. It's my agent, Annie. Are you there yet? My buzz has worn off. I need a buzz. What are you worried about? She'll love you. You'll be her new Rosie O'Donnell. I'm not fat enough. Sandra Bernhardt. I'm not angry enough. I hate confrontation. I used to change the channel when Laverne yelled at Shirley. Well, tell her your mother died. Her mother died. Rosie's mother died. You'll have something in common. Oh, that's a great idea, Annie. Then we could form the Dead Mother Alliance, go nonprofit, and become besties with all the other daughters in the world with dead mothers. Oh, my God. (laughs) Just relax. Relax. You're suggesting I use my dead mother to break the ice. I look at my watch. Two minutes. Crap. I gotta go. She screams into the phone. You're having dinner at Madonna's house! I hang up. I breathe in through my nose to the count of four. And out through my mouth to the count of six. (sighs) I do this three times. It's supposed to relax you. I pull up to the foot of the driveway. I roll down my window and press the fancy buzzer intercom thing. I look up at the hidden camera that isn't really hidden, nestled in the perfectly pretentious bushes framing the Madonna's driveway, and wave hello at it. Jesus Christ, I'm off to a bad start. A young woman's voice comes out of the box. Yes? Hi, it's Suzanne. I'm here. Here to have dinner <clears throat> with Madonna. <laughs> I suddenly fear that I have the wrong time, the wrong night, the wrong outfit. Drive on up. 
I have the right night. I have the right time. Still pretty sure I have the wrong outfit. <laughs> the intimidating gate opens up, and I drive on up, intimidated. I see a magnificent 1920s Mediterranean-style villa. I park in the round driveway, in through my nose to the count of four, out through my mouth to the count of... Oh, fuck it. I get out of the truck and make my way to the front doors. They are taller than any door should ever be. They are made of glass and covered in beautiful, ornate, wrought iron designs. I ring the doorbell and feel uncomfortable knowing that anyone inside can see me standing outside. I try to look interesting. I come bearing gifts, two beautiful candles, hopefully to be lit at the dinner table while I say something profound. An assistant type answers the door. Come on in. I walk past her into what can only be described as a mini palace. Marble floors, antique tapestries, Italian silk drapes. I see a long wooden table ahead of me in the dining room, and on it, something extraordinary. The head of the table and the seat directly to its left are beautifully set for dinner. Our dinner. Just me and the Madonna. (laughs) Assistant puts her hand on my arm. Emma's just getting out of the shower. You're welcome to wait in the kitchen. Everyone close to the Madonna calls her M. <laughs> I walk into the kitchen and find two young French women preparing dinner. They're beautiful in the way that only French women can be beautiful. The slight overbite, the square jaw, the willowy posture. I awkwardly knock into a stool. I feel like my limbs are made of stone and I'm unable to lift them gracefully. I deduct that Frenchies are the Madonna's private chefs. I chat them up. Mmm, smells delicious. Merci. Then... I hear a voice, the voice, her voice, calling out to me. Hello? I come out of the kitchen to greet her. She's right out of the shower and looking radiant. I've always hated those women who could get ready like a man. Shower and go. Go screw yourself is what I say. (laughs) The Madonna's hair is damp. She smells like Joe Malone, and she's not wearing an ounce of makeup. She's dressed casually in a tank top and trousers that hang low around her rock-hard abs. The first thing that comes out of my mouth is quite possibly the stupidest thing that has ever come out of my mouth. Can I touch your arms? Oh, no. What in holy hell is wrong with me? I should just leave, but I can't feel my feet. Then, to my surprise, she smiles, holds her arms out towards me. Sure. I walk toward her and place my hands around her biceps. I give them a small squeeze. They're extraordinary. (laughs) They're my litmus test, she says proudly. If a man doesn't like them, I know immediately he's not the one for me. Things are going very well. (laughs) So, do I call you Madonna M? Confident, I throw in a joke. Joyce? I get no laugh on Joyce. I put it behind me. I move on. (laughs) She answers flatly, M. We sit down at the long, beautiful table. I start to relax. Frenchie one pours us each a glass of wine. I take a sip and notice her staring at the gift. I brought you something. I hand her the wrapped candles. She seems pleased to receive a gift. She then rips into the box like a child on Christmas morning. They're beautiful. Let's light them. She uses one of the already lit tapers at the table to light them. I lift my glass of wine to toast the characters we're playing in the film. To Abby and Annabelle, she repeats. To Abby and Annabelle. Not profound, okay, but I'm starting to feel like after the passing her arm litmus test, the candles, and the go-ahead on M, I've got this thing locked up. The salads are placed down in front of us. The Madonna proceeds to eat hers with her hands. (laughs) She asks me all about my life. I launch into my spiel. She seems interested. She's a very good listener. Lots of eye contact and head nodding. I start to feel fascinating while simultaneously not feeling fascinating at all. I try not to stare at the balsamic dressing dripping through her fingers. (laughs) I'm really enjoying her company, although it's difficult to navigate a give and take with someone famous, because unless you've been living under a rock for the last 20 years, you already know everything about them. So when I was in high school, we all dressed up like you. (laughs) She sticks some arugula in her mouth, looks at me blankly, and says, How tragic. Not the reaction I was hoping for. Two steps forward, one step back. Frenchie One brings our main course, some fish cooked without oil or preservatives. It tastes amazing. The Madonna uses her fork to eat her fish and begins to open up about her personal life. She talks about Sean Penn wanting to get married again, having more kids. She is nothing like who I thought she'd be. She has this whole persona, you know, this don't fuck with me thing. But one-on-one, she's quite vulnerable, almost fragile. Like at any moment, she could begin to cry. Not out of sadness, but because she seems to have a sea of very complicated emotions just below the surface. 
I suddenly feel like kindred spirits, for I too have a sea of very complicated emotions <laughs> just above the surface. <laughs> she mentions that she doesn't allow her daughter Lola to watch TV. Oh, I think that's a great idea. In fact, I really try to limit the amount of time I watch TV, and I'd never be one of those people who have a TV in their bedroom. That room is a sanctuary. It's the place you go to rest. I just can't imagine what kind of person would have a TV in their bedroom. I sound like some weirdo in Birkenstocks with long armpit <laughs> hair. I shut up. Frenchie, too, clears our plates, and I'm a little disappointed because, frankly, I wanted seconds. <laughs> I ask myself, is this really my life? Sitting at Lee Madonna's dinner table, wishing I had more fish? <laughs> I'm trying desperately to remember what I did to get here so that I'll be able to recreate it when my life sucks again. We have dessert in her living room. Oh, no, I'm feeling nervous again. There's no candlelight or table to hide behind, and we're sitting on a couch. You see, I, I don't have a good couch body. You need a long torso to look good on a couch, and I don't have one. When you're short-waisted and sitting on a couch, your breasts land dangerously close to your hips, giving your body a very unflattering, boxy line. I try to sit tall. I sit on my feet. Why in the world would I sit on my feet and hide my long legs? My legs are the only thing I have going for me. I take my legs out from under my ass and extend them proudly. Too proudly. I look like a howler monkey. <laughs> I bring them back in a bit. I sit on a pillow. Now my breasts are dangerously close to my hips, only I'm higher up. I'm almost towering over the petite, perfectly proportioned body of the Madonna. Not a good message to send. I take the pillow out from under my ass and put it in front of my stomach. I hug it. I hold onto that damn pillow like it's a seat cushion that doubles as a flotation device. I say out loud, not meaning to, ah, there. The Madonna just stares at me. I feel like some make-a-wish kid having one last bite of sorbet with my hero before I kick it. Desperate, I blurt out, my mother's dead. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it hangs in the air. An eternity passes. I stuff some sorbet in my face. Then she speaks. Don't you hate Mother's Day? Ka-ching! Dead mother gold, baby! I am back! <laughs> I push my legs out half an inch. Take that, the Madonna. Look at those fucking gams. Long dead mother having gams. Make a wish on that. <laughs> we finish our dessert, and she gives me a guided tour of the house. The cost of one of her numerous paintings could buy me a cute little condo north of Montana. I decide that will be her Christmas gift to me. We end the tour in her bedroom, where I see at the foot of her bed what must be a 47-inch rear projection television. Oh, I stare at it. I feel sick to my stomach. I look at it and make an indistinguishable sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two steps forward, one giant step back. I'm hoping she invites me to lay in bed with her to watch home movies. <laughs> Instead, the Madonna walks me out of her bedroom, gives me a crooked smile, and says, Good night. She then closes the door behind her, in my face. Wow. I am left standing alone in the living room. Was it the TV thing? My wrong outfit? Have I shit myself without knowing it? I divert my attention to the seat of my pants. Dry. I follow up with a pit sniff. Powder fresh. After a few moments of standing there, feeling exactly like I did when the coolest girl in high school made fun of my flat ass, I see myself out. As I let go of the two tall glass doors with the wrought iron designs, I miscalculate how heavy that it is, and it slams closed. The sound is deafening, so loud I fear I've shattered the glass. Once on the other side, I yell out to no one in particular, Sorry! <laughs> in the coming days, weeks, months, and years that I've been asked to describe what meeting the Madonna icon maverick superstar was like, I can only really come up with this one thing. She eats salad with her hands. Wow, that's a good story. That's much better than my story. I you mean you and Ed McMahon? Me and Ed McMahon. Yeah, I like this Although story we, much we, better. We Every were shirtless, story has its worth. Still. Huh? It's, it's worth it, but it doesn't involve so many details. I enjoyed the details. I cut many of, of the details so out. So what movie was this? Yes. It was called The Next Best Thing. Oh, The Next Best Thing. My okay. family saw. Okay, and that's great. That's Wait a minute, what it. was the plot of The Next Best what Thing? The Next Best Thing is she, uh, she gets impregnated by her best friend, Rupert Everett, who's gay. Oh, I see. Oh, that's right. Yes. That's right. Now, yes. she's not really an actress anymore. I mean, she kind of had a go of it and then didn't work out. Is that right? Do you think? Um, I'm not sure. I know she's directing a film right now, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she acted again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, well, did you, have you liked her in movies? I mean, have you seen some of her other work? Um, um, I loved her in Desperately Seeking Susan. Of course. 
Um, I like Trinavita. Does she? Oh, I know. That was a really good yeah. movie. I like that too. Yeah. Does she have an English accent? She did when I met her, yes. Why is that? I'm not sure. Because she invents herself, reinvents herself all the time. So, her, I mean, she's some Italian girl from, I think, Detroit. Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. So Detroit. Yeah. She turned herself into a completely different person. So it's like, all right, I'll just have you a different know, but accent. But if I too. have a beer and I'm around Southerners, I start talking like that. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> but you really do come off as an actress. I mean, you are an actress, but you're like more of an actress than people that say they're actresses. Do you know what I mean? Like you are, you're an actress. I mean, I was just wondering, do you do like books on tape and audio books? Because it seems like you can seamlessly go from these characters. I would love to do that. I've never done that actually. You'd I'd be so good at that. voiceovers, but I would love to do books on tape. You'd be so good at that. I oh, could see you. like the naughty little girl ooh. and I could see the narrator and then ooh, I could see ooh. the highfalutin crazy lady. Hang on, I'm back to the, I'm <laughs> stuck on the naughty little girl. Do you really not believe <laughs> Eating salad with her hands, she needs to what be What do you believe about punished. TV in the bedroom? Well, I'm about to probably put a TV in my bedroom because oh. our TV is in the living room and our daughter's getting her big girl bed. And so in order to keep her in there, we'll probably not have to be in the living room. It's very complicated. I but. see. I see. I actually, I actually do believe in that premise of uh, no TVs in the bedroom. Do you believe that, Hannes? I do it's not like believe I'm so that in school, any way, right? shape or form. If I could have a TV in my bathroom, I would Really? And what would that be for, Hannes? What do you need to see at that moment? And would you be in the bath or using the toilet when you watch it? Oh, I'd be it? using the toilet. What am mm-hmm. I, some kind of weirdo? But what, what do you have to see? Like, what are you missing if the TV isn't going from room to room to room? Listen, I love Everybody Loves Raymond, all right? Yeah. So if I aren't watch, am not watching Everybody Loves Raymond uh, five times a night on TV land, my life is uh, poor. The suitcase episode. Do you the suitcase truly, very good. Do you truly you I enjoy do watch the, a the lot Thanksgiving of, episode? Excellent. The Thanksgiving. You, you love watching TV, though, right? I Hannes? love me it's the TV. It's your way to relax. It is. It exists. I, I have the TV on when I'm on the computer. I uh, although strangely enough, actually, it's funny. I don't. I don't actually watch. I have a TV in the. We have a TV in our bedroom. I don't watch that much of it as you would think because I can't watch TV and go to sleep. Right. I do right. have to turn the TV off and read. That's to good. Go to sleep. Yeah, that helps. And I, I have think. to read a book yeah. that I've read a thousand times before because if I read a new book and it's making new sensations in my head, then I don't sleep. Right. You see Suzanne, what I'm saying? Yes. When you're on TV now, because you've yes. done a lot of shows, mm-hmm. you seem to do a lot of the one hour drama. I, you like, kinda, I prefer those. Yeah, you really do a great job. And so oh, do you. you tell your family, hey, I'm going to be on Desperate Housewives on Sunday or do you, nobody cares anymore? Oh, no, they care. Oh, they, good. They get mad at me when I don't tell them. Oh, okay. But then... But then, you know, they'll say, oh, I missed it. Yeah. But nowadays, yeah, it used to be, you know, you kids don't remember that. It used to be when you missed a TV show, you missed a TV show. Right. right. And now you wait 24 hours and it's on Hulu or it's on NBC.com Thank or goodness. something. So it's like. You know what I do? I just stick it on Facebook. And if you see it, you see it. I always oh, feel great. weird telling people. I I'm going to be on television. Watch me, uh, you know. Yeah, but it is an accomplishment and you're an actress and it's a body of work and you've been doing it for so long, 15, 20 years, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so and it's yet not you're 23. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm saying it's I not like Suzanne Kroll just decided to do this little acting thing for three or four years. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, she's not exactly. just giving it a go. She's an actress. She's a professional actress. And we can find you again at, is it SuzanneKroll.com? What are we looking at? Um, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. Oh, good. Uh, really? So and, can I'm you find Storyworthy on both of And I have, a, uh, I, I have a, I have a Suzanne Kroll coaching site on Facebook. And what do you coach? I coach actors for auditions. How wonderful. Yeah. So you, they bring to you a scene and you work with them. Exactly. I don't do class. I don't coach them just, hey, this is how you act. They come to me with material and I prepare them for the audition because auditions are very, very daunting. That's true. Give us an example of what, who calls you and what is the scene? Um, um, I have a lot of younger clients, clients in their 20s. I actually have a 19-year-old girl um, doing all the shows that are on TV right now, going in for them, and they just don't know how to approach material. And so you play the other character. I play the other character, and I explain to them what what to expect in the room, how to uh, have an objective the moment before, um, and also when they don't get it, which they probably will not get it because that's just the business. doesn't matter how brilliant you are. Um, how to pull themselves together and go on in life because it's it's really wow. hard. Suzanne, that sounds like a, gr- a great uh, little job of itself. Well, it helps itself. me because, you know, I'm still out there doing it and I'm auditioning and there are jobs that I want. Just the other day, I didn't get one. And 
It was one of those jobs that I wanted to just sleep for about two weeks afterwards. Wow. I didn't get. And That's upsetting. It's now, just was the business, that just, you know? an, was it an audition and a producer session or how yeah, far did you yeah, get? Yeah, yeah, producer session. So you had the regular audition, then you get called into... No, I went straight to the producer session. You went session. straight to producers. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. And so at that point, there's usually six or seven people up for it. Um, Four or five. Sometimes 15 even. Oh, I see. Yeah. And this one, maybe there's about 12 women. Do you like your manager? Do you like your I agent? Do. I do. Because that's a big part of it out here. It is. You know, it's like a marriage. Who knows who? That's what it is. That's what it is. It's, you know what? I, I turned a corner a couple years ago where I don't complain about the business. Not that we are complaining about right. it. But because it's one of those things, if, if you're not happy, you got to do something else. Right. Because it's too damn hard. Right. We have a, an acting teacher that we both uh, really like, Hannes and I. His name Brian is Reese. Brian yes. Reese. And, oh, he yeah, says, yeah. Yeah. and he says, if you don't like auditioning, then just get out of the business. Exactly. Because everybody auditions. There's like four people yeah, that, that don't he's, audition. He's like, the job is auditioning and getting the job that they pay you for is gravy. That's the that's, gravy. Yeah, that's the reward. The absolutely. reward is working. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I understand the, um, that. I, 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 would, uh, I have a, a question. Actually, I do want to go back to your story just a bit because. Yes. So you did shoot the movie. I and shot the movie. And that means you spent weeks and weeks yes. with Madonna. Yes. So how did <laughs> I your. I have many stories. Did, your, did, it, did it get better? Did it get worse? Did it get more normal I as it went on? Did you have a relationship with her? No, no. What I found was one on one, alone, away from anyone else in the world, she's quite interesting and personable and very intense. You bring in an audience, meaning anyone else. Right. And um, you suddenly uh, are, 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 are. The way I described it is. You have a sleepover with the prettiest, most popular girl in high school. Okay. She oh, tell, boy. She opens, if I had a dime for every time that happened to me she, in high school. She opens up her heart to you. Right. Tells you her, all her secrets. Right. And then her it. friends come. Then you see her at school the next day. Right. And you go, hey, Jennifer. And she kind of looks at you like, don't talk to me at school. Wow. It's that kind of thing. Wow. That's intense. Um, she has bigger fish to fry when she's on the set than talk to you. Yeah. All right. Oh, anything sure. else we should know about Madonna? Um, uh, she was magnificently radiant and beautiful in person. Oh, that's great to know. Yeah. And, uh, she has a star quality. She has a star quality and it was fun to act with her because she, she's very funny. I'm being very careful with what I say, but there's so much coming out of her, right? Yeah. She's, she controls a lot of it. I think if I were her coach, I would say, get out of your head, get out of your way. Ooh. Um, I think why mm. she is a billionaire and why she's such a, an amazing business person and, and, Magi uh, magician, musician, because so much of that is technical. Yeah. Is because she controls every aspect of it. And when you're acting, if you're in your head and you're controlling your moments, no magic can happen. Nothing can be real. Nothing can be organic. And that's why I feel like when she's on film, mm. it's just stale. Yeah, it doesn't come across. Because she's a business person and she's <sighs> deciding how to do things. Hannes, isn't it exciting to have a real actress in the room? <laughs> It is. I'm After just talking saying, to you for a year, we it's like, a lot oh, of I'm so that's mean. Okay. That's why I think saying that, Desperately yes. Seeking Susan, yeah. I think she just let herself go. Right. And, and it works for she's her. She's so interesting to look at. Just let it go. I think Woody Allen would be great with her because he tapes rehearsals. Not that I know this. He, he films rehearsals. And, or, or someone like from Friday Night Lights. They just have three cameras set up and they just say go. Wow. You know, instead of, okay, you walk to this spot, action, say your line, you know, where it's not technical. I think a director who would really understand that would get a fabulous it's performance. It's very interesting, out of her. isn't it, yeah, honest? Yeah, I mean, actresses coming from so many different points of view, and this is a film, uh, you know, Suzanne Crowell is a yeah, film and television knows. actress, so she's coming at a whole different uh, objective I know, with it's a weird camera. Because, yeah, because, uh, I mean, I know just enough about acting to get what you're saying, which is. Act, uh, television or film of any kind, there's a huge amount of stuff that needs to be controlled. Right. The lighting, the sound, you're blocking because you have to be in a place, except if they're shooting on multiple cameras. So it's like to the actors who are successful are able to be free inside a huge amount of restrictions. That's like you, you have to wear makeup. That's exactly. You can't right. move your clothes because you're wearing a microphone. You can't do... A million things to right. be able to be free. It's not like you're and, on a stage and can just do whatever you want. It's technically yeah. You can't yeah. Important. If you're in a play, you could, except for very important scenes of blocking, you could 
you could sit in a chair differently. You could stand by the chair. You could do what you felt like doing. But if you're supposed to sit in a chair in a film, you, you got to sit in a fucking chair in a because that is <laughs> right. like not going to yeah. happen. And, and, your, you have eye to line lines. Is, and yeah. your eye line is really never another person. It's generally right past the camera. An X on the camera. An yeah. X on the camera is your eye line. So you're not even talking There's to anyone sometimes else. Sometimes the good, you know, really great actors will be your eye line for you. Oh, it's so Los Angeles, isn't it, Hannes? It's so Los Angeles. I know. You know who was uh, famous for that? Uh, I believe Paul Newman. Oh, really? Would uh, always... Uh, Help even out if he wasn't on the actor, camera, even yeah. when he was very He'd feed uh, his he's elderly and, and also just, you know, a giant, he was an icon. He would, he would be, if he was doing a scene with somebody, it was their close up. He would be stand behind the camera and he would do it with them. That's a good man. Yeah. That's a good man. Well, he All understood right. that if they were good, they would make the movie better. Yeah, something these kids today. <laughs> That's right. Suzanne know. Kroll, thank you so much for coming on the story. Me. K or C? K or C? It's K. K R U L L. That's All absolutely right, right. All right, you guys, we're going to wrap this up. I'd like to thank John Thomas Griffith. You know, he does our theme song, Hannes. Follow me. You familiar with the song? Follow me as we want you to do on Twitter and Facebook. That's right. Those are not the lyrics to the song, by the way. <laughs> you can find John Thomas at johnthomasgriffith.com. And of course, he's out there touring with Cowboy Mouth all the time. Oh, Cowboy. Boy mouth. That's right. And on behalf of Jorge Reyes, our sound engineer and our storyteller, Suzanne Kroll, and of course, my co-host, Hannes Finney, my name is Christine Blackburn saying, make it a story worthy week. Thanks for joining us on the Story Worthy Podcast. We'll be back next week with all new stories. If you have a five-minute story that is worthy, send us an email at info at storyworthypodcast.com and you may be on the next Story Worthy. Subscribe to Story Worthy on iTunes and visit the Story Worthy website at storyworthypodcast.com. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Can I be real for a second? That goal you have to exercise and eat better, you really can do it. But nobody is going to do it for you. And nobody has to because you can do it if you have the right tools and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great. New message. Hey, girlfriend, it's Carol from Jury Duty. We never actually spoke, but I saw you ordered the same hoagie as me at lunch. What are the chances? Anywho, I heard you just got a boat. We should totally grab some hoagies and take it out for a spin. When you get a boat, you also get new friends. Make sure Progressive's one of them and get coverage today for as little as $100 a year. Do I want to feel the wind in my hair? Guilty as charged. <laughs> oh, seriously, let's ride on your boat. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Annual premium for basic liability policy not available in all states.